I was just about to say, eight o'clock? I was just about to say, get this. It is so bad. No one even knows, quote unquote, how to flirt anymore. No one even, quote, knows, end quote, quote, how, and quote, to go flirt, end quote, anymore. But get this, it gets deeper real quick with me. Does flirtation have any purpose in planet Tierra, under heaven, at all, at all? I would say no. But if perchance flirtation held any quote value of going, of end quote, at any time in history, present momently, historically, it has absolutely zero quote value, end quote. Now, poor hell. I just walked in there. I said, "This guy is, looks at me. He looks at me. He looks up at me ignominiously. He looked up at me ignominiously, like. But no, based on my internal, I, I, yeah, I thought he was attractive. I'm at an Asian restaurant. I thought this gentleman, this. Oh, by the way, he seemed gentle. He had a nice, like. But I don't know, he might be 18, 19, he'll be about 19 years old or 20 years old. I don't know, he could be 17, no? Could there be 17 year olds that look 19 or 20 years old? Oh yeah, especially in a planet like this. Squirmy, wormy planet. Squiggles and jiggles and wriggles inside it. With all the spirals of spiralings, of spiralings. With all the spirals of spiralings, of spiralings. With all the spirals of spiraling. Oh yeah, there could be 19 and 20 year old looking homebrace that are uh, very sexy, cool, 17 and a half years old, or 16 and a half. Let's be honest, this guy looks like he'd be 19 or 20. I don't know. Could he be 17.5 years old? Oh sure. I could be off a year or two digits there, numerically. That's the beauty of it. Just kidding. That's the cool beauty, unquote, of the wormiest worst. The wormiest worstness. But no, let's supersede that with this. He's probably 19 years old or older. Or 20 years old, whatever. 22, 21, I don't care. Let's go that. He's probably 19 years old or older. But get this. Let's supersede that immediately with this. Let's transcendently transcend that topic immediately with this. Very cute, very... Again, had a gentle energy, just like had that... That Asian charm that always attracted me, like these young Asian dudes. But no, there was something special about this one. But get this, it's gonna be real interesting for me that it's a, it's a micro worm. What do I mean by micro worm? What do I mean by micro blank? I mean, it's like a. <laughs> like a blooming mushroom. So get this, I said to him, I said, um, I didn't know, I, I didn't know what's going on at the. The soda dispenser's not working. You must need to, I don't know if it's like a button you press. He looks at me, he looks at me like this, like this. Oh, sure, I'll get it. Turns a key, a little key. Had to be a key, because it was like a keyhole thing. It was like one of those squiggly keyhole things. I look afterward. He looked at me like, yeah, I'll get it. Never even quote thought of going to say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't know the soda machine was shut off. Never occurred. Never occurred to say, if he liked me at all, why didn't he say, like, oh, sir, I thought you might have a universal key for this. Just kidding, wink. That'd be a Minnesota dude. That'd be a Minnesota micro blank would be a, oh, Michael, is your name Michael? It's not on your credit card. Oh, Michael, I thought you might have the universal magic key for this one. Uh, you, could be, you might have the key to my, uh, my loins. I mean, my sexual organs. I mean, my heart, Michael. Actually, that'd be too much, right? What would a Minnesota micro blank say? If he was an all track me? How about for flotation? How about this? Yeah, I'll get it. Yeah, it's just, I'm, sorry. Be like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. I, I, I thought it was still turned on. On the other hand, I thought maybe I had the universal key for these things, one of these moments. I thought you might have the universal key for this one. 
Michael. With or without my name after. I thought you might have the universe key for this, Michael, as you might have the key to my. Wait. Oh, hold on. I think I, hold on. Hold on. I think I, I, I thought of something. I, I think I said a little bit too much. Wait. I'd be like, oh, no, you didn't. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it too a little bit. Wait. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. But even that would be too distant. That would never happen. That's too much. X day, try again. Oh my god, I got the key. Oh yeah, I'm, oh I'm sorry. I got my, oh, this is just genuine. I'm sorry. I never, I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought that was something about you, around. Okay, boom. What's the subversiveness? When I walked in, he kind of looked at me like. Even though, oh, even though he had no idea whether I was taking the food to go over there, over here. He kind of looked at me a little bit like, well, I hope he's not having it over here. Not literally, not directly. That's the... <laughs> there was a little bit of look like, oh, I hope you don't think we're open for a while yet. For like lobby hours. Maybe you should reread our new hours on our website, Michael. On the door, it's got the old hours. It says we're open in lobby. Maybe you should read the new hours as we close at 8.30 in the lobby, and it's getting a little close to 8.30, Michael. It's getting about 8.25-ish in the next 15 minutes. Maybe you should go read our online menu. Maybe you would know the store hours have changed, Michael. No, he didn't do that, but what? But his face kind of looked a little like, like ignominiously, he kind of looked up at you and it's like, like, huh? Like, huh? Like, huh? Like, not literally, but a little bit, a little bit of like a, like, did you not read our new store hours as posted on our website, Michael? A lot of our new microblank customers, the clientes, they read the online menu first. 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 They read the online menu, they read the online store hours, the actual building, actual brick and mortar building. It's our new store policy. You should read the online hours. That'll alert you, alert you and anyone like you. Which obviously you're not really abreast of these things, Michael. You don't seem very tech savvy, but by the way. You see what I mean? Like he had to look a little bit subversive like. Like, wow, does he not does he not read the online hours? I make I'm making this I'm making this up. There's no online hours. But there could be, and either way he looked at me like there's online hours. I don't know. This I'm serious. Hold on, this is very serious. Oh. I wanna be serious for a moment. This is serious. Because I have a depth of a sensibility to hear this, but this is not funny here. Does anyone see this is not that damn funny? When someone looks at you like, well, did you not read the new online hours? Think of a movie where someone gets there that, but did you not read, the, but sir, I know it's, think of like Little Miss Sunshine. But sir, didn't you read the new online hours? This concourse is only open until 7.55, what did I say? 5.50, it's already 6 p.m. It's already 5.59 p.m., sir. This, the, no, listen to me. The Concurso registration closes precisely at five zero no zero five dot dot five four dot dot zero zero no zero five dot dot five four dot dot five nine. It is already past five fifty five, sir. The registration closed at zero five dot dot five four dot dot five nine. We are well into the zero five dot dot five five dot zero zero hour. In fact, it's almost six p.m. Where do you get off showing up at 6 p.m.? Almost, that's almost 6 p.m. Thinking you can register for this concourse with your daughter. I know it's weird. I know I'm being weird. I have to do it. Good thing I'm weirder than weirder so I can get the job, I can get this done. He looked at me like, did you not read our new line of online store hours, sir? Just because the drive is open until 9.30, which still exists, we no longer have lobby hours until 9 p.m. Did you not lay error? The online menu would have told you. Think of that movie. The, the outside moose would have told you. Did you not hear Rocky and Bullwink? I mean, Marty the moose would have, would have told you had you listened, had you had ears to hear. Ears! Non laurel, non stand ears to hear. They do not flap in the wind, perhaps that is. Michael, the, Michael. The, the online menu would have clearly distinctly shown our hours have changed, had changed. As of yesterday or, no, last week, Monday, Monday. 
Last week, Monday, the, the online hours would have shown you. We're only, our lobby's only open until precisely 08.30.00. Dot, dot, zero, dot, dot, zero, dot, zero, zero. We actually looked to close several seconds before that. So actually, you should be out of here. And, and, and he'd say, by the way, it's, it's 0815. It's 08.15.00. Dot, 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 zero, zero. Approximately. This lobby closes precisely at 08.29.59. Dot, 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 We'd like to close at least a second before the 08.30.00 dot, dot, zero, dot, dot, zero, zero mark. Clearly, you're not as tech savvy as my usual boyfriends. So I'm not going to be interested. I'm not going to say no. Does anyone see what I'm doing here? No, he's not that intelligent. But no, tech savviness is not a form of intelligence, I'm going to have to say right now. Based on my divinity, my divine, spiritual, soulful intelligence. My deep depth of soulful, spiritual intelligence, says. I have more than a spark of divinity, a spark of divineness in me, says. What's, quote, happening, I go to this planet is the opuesto. It is the antithesis of anything divine related. It is the antithesis of anything divineness relatability. That quote, gen that quote, gentleman, look at me. This micro blank, look at me. Yeah, it was cute. Let's move on quickly. Looked at me like, did you not read our new hours? And I really hope you're getting this to go because we have some people here that are getting ready to leave, my own. Can you not see they're just cleaning up? They're getting ready to leave. They're getting ready to throw away their trash, my own. Speaking of getting ready to leave, I have to be home, Michael, by, by 9.59. My dog is sick. We have a new pet. Michael, I do not want to be here a full half hour past 9.30. We close at 9.30. Yeah, we like to be out by before 10 p.m. Tonight, I want to be out by 9.45. Michael, if you ain't here, that means the garbage has to be taken out at, when, when you leave, which looks to me you're going to be here until past our, new, past our new lobby hours, which close at 8.30. Which I said, we like to clear everybody out by 08.29.59. It's going to be well past 08.30.00 when you leave. Based on time of the average, typical average. And you look like you might take a little bit more time than that one. You look like you might take your time with food. But, but you might eat, you see it a little bit faster. Than, wait, listen. Listen, that, that's not the point. The point is this. Who sees what I'm doing? It's shocking, is it? It's, it's not It's not believable, is it? Here's my intelligent answer. I hope it's not believable. Here's my deeply soulful spiritual intelligence. I hope it's not believable. We have to go deeper than that word that rhymes with reliefs and deliefs and sea leafs and z leafs and other words that end with leafs and leaves. We have to go so much deeper very, very quickly. It goes like this. All of the foregoing was to set up for this. If you're totally lost, it's okay. If I was giving a homily lecture at my old Iglesia building in the sanctuary, I'd say, if everybody's lost so far, I don't care. It's okay. I mean, I, mean, I do care, but it's okay. But you should be a little bit lost. Well, not that you should be, but I haven't, I haven't clearly spoken yet. All of the foregoing was to set this up, that Everything is wrong, okay? There is so much subversive, it's like a blooming onion going boom, boom. Like a blooming onion, boom, boom. Like a blooming onion, boom, boom. I said the only quote form and code of humor is this, that the wormiestness has, or quote has, end quote, is subversivenesses of subversivenesses. Deep subversivenesses of subversivenesses. It's the only quote form, end quote, of quote humorousness, end quote, that a quote has. End quote. But now let me go back and clear up some issues, have not non-issues. Like for example, that that hombre was fine. He didn't do anything wrong. Nothing wrong at all. But I'm getting so keen, le aware, le aware of everything. He didn't actually look at me like, how dare you enter our restaurant when it's getting so long. No, but he had to look a little bit like, like half, oh, half flirtatious, like, ooh, I'm getting to you. And it was half like, sir, did you not read our new online hours? We are not open past 
08.29.59 during the week. Dur yeah, during the weekends, we're open until 9. Like, we're really going to have our lobby open the same hours on Saturday and Sunday as we do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Monday, Monday, Monday. Jeez, you're really not very tech savvy. Who sees what I'm saying? Not that he would say that. That's the wormiest room. Like, <laughs> Because I said, the Wormy is a total dweeb. It has no actual versions of, of anything cool. Nothing. It's the farthest thing from cool you can ever imagine. You can ever not imagine. You don't have to. You don't have to. Take a look around this song. Take a look around. Take a look around. Take a look around. I don't know what, I, what I'm really saying is this. There is so much subversiveness that I say, this video may be shorter than I thought because all I'm really saying is, take a look around, look every second, every microsecond there's subversive. There are subversivenesses happening right now, where we are, at this moment. Look up at your television screen, what's happening? Probably somebody Either A, spouting off when they have no clue what they're ranting about. You see this? Oh, see the first of this? I know exactly what I'm saying. And I'm not ranting, but I'm getting... I'm getting enough energy to get my ideas out. So, to my point, what did I say and then what happened? I said probably someone spouting off, someone probably ranting. A, a option A. Option B, someone saying something extremely facetiously deeply sarcastic to someone else on a Delphi program called a quote situational end quote quote comedy end quote which I think we all can agree there's nothing humorous about it yes there were certain episodes of Big Bang Theory that were slightly slightestly humorous to humorous yes there have been television programs present moment historically in the 1980 decade that were humorous to humorous such as, uh, to name a couple, give me a break, different strokes. Three's Company offered something in the way of etherealness depth. That almost no one would know what I meant by that. There was something about the soap operatic wide angle lens they used. And something about John Ritter's acting capacities that really brought it to morbid, non-morbid, ethereal. There was something. Even though everything, well, everything. I'm glad I brought this. Up, everything was completely fake on this. I mean, we all remember that show was completely fake. It made everybody feel like blank about the Who has a date every night of the week and even thinks that would be desirably desirable? I mean, that's, that's extremely subversive. I'm glad I brought this up. And then I said it's very morbidly, non-morbidly, ethereally deep. Three's company was an ethereal nightfire of nightfires. I'll get to what I mean by that. Again, I'll say it again. Who, who finds that even des a desirability? To be dating someone distinct each night of the week. Did Senior Tripper date the same woman more than once or twice? I, I had not seen it ever. Did Jack Tri did Senior Tripper find that a bit odd? I'm going deeper. Here we go. Did Senior Tripper find that a bit like eyebrow curling, like a little bit odd? Like that he would not find one woman to date more than once or twice without falling apart? Did he not feel the? <laughs> Yeah, no, if Jack, if Senior Jipper were real. Why did everything fall apart for Senior Jack Tripper? And why would he not use his legal rights to change his name legally? And it's so stupid. Alternate point. <laughs> Let's go deeper immediately. Let's forget that. Sideburn of that. Very quickly sideburn. I don't want to be, I'm not trying to be extremely humorous. The humorous. I am not attempting to be extremely uh, humorous or humorous. This is like, there are subversivenesses even within the plot lines, even within the storylines. I mean, 
we, this is very important, I'm doing this, I realize. While we, the audience, individuals viewing at home is saying, wow, he's gonna date every night of the week this week, wow. He's gonna clear out the apartment at least several nights a week, every week. For all of his myriad, what did I say? Eh, you read that one. For all of his plethora of dating prospects, okay, he has to have, they're drawing straws to see who gets the apartment one night of the week. Because they're all so active with their sex lives and their dating lives and their... Well, that's a good point. Was it more dating lives? Or was it dating lies? I did not intend to do this video on this, but here we go. Was it dating lies? I mean, we know dating is hellfire. We know that blind dates are hellacious hellfire. But we know that dating is hellfire. We know that relationships are even fiery hellfire of hell smoke and that. So while we, the audience, and the home are going, even as a child, I think I slightly resonated, wow, they really get up, they really, they get around, part of town, boo, 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 they get around. You know? Senior Tripper gets around, but so does Janet Wood and Frosty Snowcone, whatever she's in summer's character. So does Frosty Snowcone, I mean, Chrissy's Snowflakes, Chrissy Snow. Now let me say something, as a side, that show has lost any speck of anything resembling to relevancy, hasn't it? Has it not? That was one of those flash in the panners, wasn't it? That was one of those flash in the pan programs. Really, really interesting for that several year period while it was on, and then a few few years of reruns, and that was it. By the way, was there something ethereally creepy about the character Larry? All right, anyway, oh, let's forget that. I'm trying to go deeper immediately like this, like that program Third Eye from 1983 and 1984 and 1985 on the Nickelodeon network. I'm trying to go deeper very quickly here. So get this, was there something subversive even within the bot lines? Like, the Jack Tripper would be going, okay, why do my dates only last one or two nights? And it's like, <coughs> it's done. It's like the arch, <coughs> the comic book character. No, the other comic book character, the, the live action comic book character, no. Next day, let's go back. Was there something deeply subversive even within the public program that we, the audience, are going, wow, that's like, I need to have a tip of my beverage. That's a lot of dates. That's a lot of first dates, Jack Tripper. That crash and burn like pole position gameplays with with, with, with all alternate additional quarters to pluck in. I mean, plunk in, plunk in. Instead of pluck, instead of plinko, it's plucko. To pl plunko, plunko, plunk another corner in that pole position, Machinaria, Senor uh, Carey. I mean, Senorita Carey. As maybe Mariah Carey played a few video game Machinaria when she was a child. A child. A child. This is this is serious. Wonder. Okay, so while Jack, while we're all feeling like, wow, that's we're eating a popcorn at home. Maybe we're eating a popcorn. Maybe we're not. That's a lot. Now that's a lot of dates. That's a lot of first dates. A lot of first and second crash and burns. Because we know dating and blind dates are stressful, but dates are stressful. Dates are hellacious. Blind dates are extra hellaciously hellacious hellfires. Relationships are even worse. Non-occasionally, non-occasion. How about that? There's a hell fiery fieriness to all of it. To all of quote it. So while we are to be at minimum quote resonating quote with the extremely active lives, quote unquote, I mean the extremely active quote, existential, end quote, quote existence, end quote, of these human beings portrayed by alternate human beings on the television program known as Three's Company, We ourselves at home are going, wow. Now, I i mean, this, this popcorn tastes okay, but that's a lot of dating happening there that crashes and burns within one or two dates. I'm not sure that's the kind of lifestyle I want. Speaking of lifestyles, because now, because we, we know that Senior Chipper was, he was a phony. Well, he only had to be a phony. He only had to be a phony to the, um, 
to the Ropers. Yeah, he, quote, had to, end quote, quote, lie, end quote, about his sexual orientation. Supposedly. Quote, supposedly. In order to just, I guess they were very, you know, they had read, they had read the chapter of Job and maybe Times New Roman. I mean, something, something with the, with the pharaohs and the Corinthians. They had read a little bit of Bible textual this. I guess. They, they didn't want to rent to someone that was not homosexual with the women. When they weren't even dating, I mean, they were just who? Oh, who sees the intermediateness of some They weren't even dating. I mean, they were. It wasn't like a threesome, we some, let's get some together. We wouldn't actually date to a non -homo we I mean, we wouldn't actually rent to a non-homosexual that just wanted to have hanky panky here and there in a non-wilder, non-fashion with two women, with two separate individual females. There had to be a homosexual component, or these uptight elderly individuals would never rent to a non-homosexual hombre, purporting to be having casual sex with any number of women every night of the week or many nights of the week. Or was it just dating the crash and burn? He never got that. Far. We don't know. It was all of that quote innuendo and going, oh, very cutesy. Oh, look, no, put it here, Chrissy. I don't want it up there. No, I said, don't, don't pull that hard. You know, Chrissy, let go of the object. You know, crash, a base crash. Oh, it's not his penis. You know, it's like, what? It's just like, you see what I mean? It's like, but listen to this. You have to be very smart, very, very smart. So while the Ropers would never rent to a non-homosexual, which they only have slight, slightest misgivings about since he says he's gay, there seems to be some questioning as to whether he's actually gay, or quote, actually, end quote, quote, gay, end quote. I have to, I have to, I didn't want to pause there. I have to pause. This is unbelievable. And then to, the wormiest worm is going, because <laughs> what's even more subversive? John Ritter has some homosexual ish traits so forget sideburn of that let's go to the other part Jack Tripper has some homosexual ish quote traits I'm going. he doesn't walk around like oh Christy, can you put the tip up on something, something no that's what Cameron the, the, the non genius affected illiterate I mean idiotic nerdo on quote blink and quote quote family and go does extremely affect oh yeah he's full on heterosexual in his adult private life that's another thing what do we care what his private existence quote looks and quote quote we don't not if we have a speck of cool or not if we have a speck of an ounce of cool coolness we don't care it's nobody's business I've heard individuals that have achieved some level of fame say it's no one's business I don't really want to talk about it This is unbelievable. No, it is no one's business. But let's go deeper. It's no one's non-business of quote blank. Sir Michael Labrador, Rizness. It is, let's go, let's go again. It is no one's non-business of quote blank. Sir Michael Labrador, Rizness. It is no one's non-business of quote blank. Sir Michael Labrador, Rizness. But anyone pretending to purport to be really, really fascinated or even nor even interested in your individual sexual explorations individually because you've achieved some level of notoriety, I mean fame. That is absurd. Who are these micro worms that the cosmic worm has everyone? Purportedly, quote blank, end quote, quote, in and quote, that they exist. I'll go back to Three's Company in moments. I'm, I'm talking about the smearingness now, the intermediatenesses of smearingness, the intermediatenesses of smearingness, the intermediatenesses of smearingness. It is so deep. 
because the globe and the star and the non-Jones star and the, no, the Inquirer. It's not to brag about your false sexual exploits, is it? It's not to make you look anything but pathetic in the quote eyeballs, end quote, or the quote, nor the quote eyes, end quote, of the viewing public. That, oh, they're always out there watching and evaluating, I think is the take home message. Always watching and evaluating everything that you do as a person that has received any ounce of fame. I, I mean, it's. It's extremadamente. That means it is extremely subversive. Subversive. I would say if anybody had a speck of a morsel of cool and wasn't under subversiveness is more like of infiltrations of subversiveness. Infiltrations of subversiveness. Infiltrations of subversiveness. No one would, in, a, in every likelihood, in, in never likelihood, no one would be cosmopolitan, but in never likelihood would anyone buy the Globe, the Star, nor the Enquirer. You're not going to learn anything there. I said to this guy, I would go inquire somewhere else. So it's not, it's not, um, it's at every, it's at every non level of court levels. It's not intelligent. The worm is not intelligent. It is extremely connivingly conniving. Do not confuse this. Do not confuse intelligence with conniving connivingnesses. Do not confuse intelligence with conniving connivingness. I don't think anyone would. Not if they themselves were intelligent, he or she. I'll get back to Three's Company as quickly as possible. It goes like this. It is unbelievable how subversively subversive the wormiestness isn't. I said, I'll say it again, no one with an ounce of a speck of a morsel of cool would even feign interest in what someone that is currently or has ever had an acting role is doing nor non-doing at any second of any hour of any day, of any millisecond, of any second of any hour of any day of the week, the month, the year, be it a Saturday, a Sunday, a Monday, non-fun day, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it doesn't matter. No one with a speck of a morsel of cool would even feign quote interest end quote in what you and you and you and you and you are doing welcome to a view that actually has a depth of a sensibility for humorous I mean a depth of soulfulness spiritual intelligence I've never had any speck of interest. I've never even had a speck of feigningness of interest in what others are doing, nor quote doing, and well, in the eyes of the paparazzi, la da da I mean, it's like, who subversively, heliotropically, blacknessly, Respect the Nazis. I mean, this is all funny. I, I, this is all funny. It isn't. It's so funny. It isn't. It's funny. This, this, this. The wormiest worm is on the other side of indifference. There's a depth of indifference. It's on the other side of that. It's like here's indifference. Here's a depth of indifference. It's over here. 
It's way, way over here. Way over Way over there. Way over there. Way over there. Here is the depth of a wall of indifference. It's not funny. I didn't mean to have a... Here is a depth... Let's try again. Here is a depth of wall of indifference. The wormiest worm is way over here. I mean, way over here. I mean, way over there. Past the deep wall of indifference. Un muro de indiferencias. There's no such thing as words that rhyme with Dayton. Unless it's a song by a foreigner that says, I've been waiting for a chica como ti to come into my kitchen and cook some. No, that's terribly subversive. No, I'm just kidding. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. There, there's no such thing as blank. Say, Remy Galabra, waiting and dating that town in Ohio. There's no, there's nothing. The wormiest worm destructively quote blank about the dichotomousness between blank, say, Remy Galabra, sod, and blank. Say, Remy Galabra, Dayton. Which used to be a pretty nice clothing store just outside of Hudson, Wisconsin. I mean, Burnsville, Minnesota. Imagine a stupid movie scene. No, it's not funny. It's not funny. I'm going to repeat. It's not funny. It desires harmfulnesses at every microsecond. So I'm going to try to review the key points. Maybe I'll get back to the topic of blank. Maybe I won't. La, da, 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 da. You'll see that it, it desires harmlessness at every microsecond. I mean, I oh, I said, look at the subversiveness at every microsecond. Look. Look at your television screen, madam. It's happening now. Someone's got an annoying piece of hair hanging over their eyebrow, and they're just kind of going like over their eye right now. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in the world right now, there's a newscaster with a piece of hair going uh, over their eye. It's that stupidly detailed. It's stupid. It's how about people that are constantly flipping their hair out like this? Historical moment. Is that extremely subversive? No, it's subversively subversive and it's freaking annoying. And the worm, I'm glad I brought this up, the worm desires to be annoyingly annoying at every, at every millisecond of every momentary moment. It wants, it desires it, and so often it, quote, achieves, unquote, quote, 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 by being extrem, extremely, you know, extremadamente, extremely, extremadamente, extremely annoying, annoying as I mean, have you ever once thought, wow, I really need to look at my vitamin D dosage. I, I, I just, I just, I, I'm starting to feel like, I don't know, like, that's, maybe this is me. I don't know, it's like a very annoyingness in the atmospheric atmosphere. Because I remember when I first started taking vitamin D, I thought it was like miraculous. And I'm like, wow, I feel so much better. Oh, so I have to do something. Oh, no, I don't. I'm glad I said I have to do something. No, I don't. I'm glad I said I have to do something. No, I don't. I remember I, I, I did it already. Forget it. I don't know what to do to, to wrap this up. How about this? Remember, th I said three's company. But look at the subversiveness is within the plot line. Like if Jack Chipper were real. He can never get a date to last more than one or two dates without crashing and burning, pretty much. But we, this is the subversiveness. But we, the at-home individuals viewing this, are supposed to be all, we're supposed to be really jealous. Did it ever occur to me we're supposed we are supposed we are supposed in italics. 
We are supposed to be very jealous of a woman that won $100,000 on Wheel of Fortune last week. I mean, last week or last month, whatever. Exactly, the matter. Oh, I'm glad I brought this up. This is a juicy one. This is a juicy grub one. This is not a joke. We are supposed to feel very, very jealous of that woman that went under million, hundred thousand dollars on Wheel of Fortune last month or last week or last year, whenever it was. We are supposed in italics to feel jealous of every game from it at ad levels that we can scarcely, non scarcely, comprehendly begin to begin to explicatively explicate. explicate. This is not a joke. This is where I say I wish it was more of a joke in the way of humor. Humor says, I am glad that it's not a joke in the way I'm not making it. It's not funny. I think that things are that are extremely, subversively not funny, as in non-funny at all, need to be approached non-humorously as possible. I have to continue to, get, to continue to scratch deeper before I make it more humorous and humorous eventually. No, this is very, this is like, this is, this is not like, this is sick, sickest stuff I'm talking about. Not stuff even, it's, this is sick sickestness. The wormiest worm would like, it desires harmfulnesses at every level, at every micro level. It wants you to feel jealous and jealous. I've been introduced winning a million dollars on that one show that, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, oh Jeopardy. A million dollars, I couldn't think of it. Oh, Jeopardy, yeah. Double the fun on Jeopardy. Let's memorize random tidbits of quote data end quote, I mean quote, data, end quote, tidbits, in the hopes of appearancely achieving what's called intellectualism. Okay, how is memorizing tidbits of random data intellectual? It's not. It's not even intelligence. Or should I say, it's not intelligence at all. It's not even intellectualism at all at all. It's probably better to say that. Um... Memorizing random, non-random tidbits of quote information is not useful. It is not useful, useful. Quote winning, end quote, dinero on a game show television program is not useful, useful. It is non-usefully, non-useful. Not really. We have to go deeper. To say money itself is a currency. Monetary currency is not usefully not. It's not usefully useful. It is not usefully not useful. It is non usefully non useful. Except that everything is quote set up and quote backward. Lead backwards. And we have difficulties when we can't scratch deeper. We can't scratch deeper. We can't scratch deeper. See what I just said? Can't scratch. We can't scratch deeper. We can't scratch deeper. We can't scratch deeper. Ooh. Ooh. Imagine a factory where they made nothing but parts under the title of Ooh. The Michael Jackson song on it. Ooh. How many guys have I seen in the last 25 years or more? More. 25, 35 years that made me go, Ooh. Part of my inner interior being went, Ooh. Things that made me go, Ooh. 
because um get this eye candy will not cause diabetic ketoacidosis it will not cause diabetic conditions it will not rot your dientes. But it may provide a longing, it may, it may quote provide and quote, quote you and go with a longingness at levels that are non usually non useful. That's good. I say it's better to do the spiritual, do the deep soulful spiritual work. I'm gonna end with, maybe I'll end with this. Do the deep spiritual soulful work. Do the deep soulful spiritual work. It is so bad. I, I talk to, I pray, I talk to Jesus Christ. I say, it is so bad. It is not, it is not even, it's bad. I said a few weeks ago, I said to Jesus, I was praying, I was like, it's, it's bad, isn't it? It's bad, it's bad. It's like that one thing. He's like, what's, I want to know more about this bad thing, Egon. No, it is very depressing. But we have to get very, very deeply, deeply, solely, spiritually real. It is very, very depressing, but... Um, I'm going to end with, uh, I'm going to try to end this because I got to go. I'm going to drive myself to the store. Um, I don't know what else to say about Three's Company other than look for the subversiveness is there. Homosexual or isn't he? No, he's not. That's all a ruse so that they can exist inside of that dwelling unit. Because the Ropers are a bit on the conservative religious side of things, occult things. They're a bit, they've, they've done a bit of Bible reading in their day, you know. Plus, it's like 1978 or 1979, so. 1980, 1979, 1981, you know, it's. A man living without a ring. Put a ring on it, Jack Tripper, if you're going to live with it. Put a ring on one of their fingers and kick the other. You know, it's, um, it's unbelievable. Because I said, well, I, I'll, I'll try it the other way. Jack Chipper had some, not, not effeminate per se, but some mannerisms, nothing, nothing major. Nothing all that minor. It was more of a... Nothing non-Steve Minor that that couldn't get. No. Forget that. Sideburn of that entirely. But he had nothing majorly homosexually, like, affected manners. No, not really. A little bit. A little bit. Did John Ritter have that? A little bit. Maybe a little bit. Not to cast dispersions on Senor Ritter's homoerotica tendencias or lack thereof. I don't care. This is a beautiful moment for me to say, I don't care. And here's probably the more accurate answer is, whatever homoerotica traits, no, more like homoerotica sensations he had in his genitals, was he completely awarely aware of it? No, he was married to a female, was he not? When he had a heart, he had a heart attack and he died of a heart attack. See, this ties in so non-beautifully, quote, beautifully, and go with my topic of Tilly, the cleaning housekeeping staff on that in that one movie. No, John Ritter, John Ritter uh, se murió de un ataque cardíaco. But no, he, he, um, he I believe, I believe as, I, as I understand it, he was married to a female. Might have produced some offspring, if I'm not mistaken, so we have to deal with that. We have to deal with uh, whatever erotica imageries, fantasies. He did not want that quote lifestyle, end quote, of homosexuals, historically, non historically, presumably, presumably historically, non historically. He did not want that quote lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle. It's another erroneousness we have to cure, but 
We'll get there. But let's just say that John Ritter wanted to be with a female. Or he thought he did. Or he thought he did. Or he thought he did. That's the other thing. Or he thought he did. How many individuals have we met? Let's say we're in our 40s. I'm in my 40s. I'm well into my 40s. How many individuals have we met in our 40s or 30s or 20s even? We're like, wow, now I'm so sure he would end up with another guy. Or I'm so, so sure she'd end up with another woman. Like, we're literally like, wow, I never would have thought. Like, anybody who's openly uh, homoerotically... I, I go by homoerotically asexually, asexual, because... I think relationships are pre disastrousness pre-failure. It was a pre-non-recipe of a pre-quote recipe, unquote, for disastrousness pre-failure. Pre-disastrousness pre-failure. But again, not to cast any aspersions on anyone else. I'm just saying, to me, it is. And I think if we're all, we're being really, really honest, we say, I don't, anybody would say, I, yeah, I myself question whether it's worth any of it. I'd say, they'd say, I'd be like, yeah, exactly. Any of it meaning, what, the abuse? The abusiveness is that you put up with all the, the subtle cla clasps of the, clicks of the tongue? Clicks of the tongue should be the name of the song. All these love songs about pre-relationship yearning and lusting and wondrous, 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 wonder lusting. How many songs are about post-relationship hellfire breakdown failures? With and nor without. Without a Kurt Russell motion picture in many cases. By the way, what a horrificness of a quote motion and quote, quote picture and quote, was breakdown. That was right in the wheelhouses, I think, is what I'm res what I'm quote resonating and quote, quote with. Quote. The motion, the quote motion, and quote, quote picture and quote breakdown was right in that wheelhouses of the worm is worm. That would be right in there with short list of quote effectiveness and quote quote oriented and quote motion picture quote motion and quote quote pictures and quote like a stun gun to the soul fibers fibers That required a pause. I saw that quote motion and quote quote picture and quote in 1990 whatever, and I was in the 1990 decade, and I it did feel like a stun gun to the soulful fibers fibers, did it not? I have to, I have to end this video. Think about the subversiveness as if if Senior Tripper were real. He could be like, imagine the deleted episode. I don't know what it is, Chrissy. What, what is it, Jack? You know when Jack George gets serious? I don't know. It's just, it's, he's like, what is it, Jack? You know, Chrissy, I just don't know what it is, but every time I go on a date or two, it crashes and burns over my very eyes. And you and Janet have nothing to do with it. Don't even get any ideas. What do you mean, Jack? Boop. Let's say she's too dumb to see that he's trying to be cute. He's trying to be humorous and cute. Like, and you and Janet have nothing to do with it. Don't worry. I didn't think we did, John. Because <laughs> she's like the resident airhead. You know. How about Janet instead? No, let's stick, let's stick with Chrissy. He says no, Chrissy goes like this. Because they had kind of a thing. Janet and, I mean, no. Chrissy and, and Jack are kind of a... He says, Chrissy, I don't know what it is. Every time I go on a date or two, it crashes and burns. I don't know what it is. Is it me? Well, gee, Jack. I always thought you were a charmer. A non-snake charmer. <laughs> There's nothing to say. I can't even think of anything. She's, she was such an airhead. She wouldn't even be able to talk about something serious. Like, But let's say, let's keep, let's try to keep going. I'm going to have to stop this video, but let's say he says, no, I don't, I really don't, I really, I really don't know what it is.
Let's add a thick layer of stupid. He says, and I feel like the home viewers are going to get a wrong idea. What do you mean, chat? The home viewers? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wink, wink. Wink, wink to Suzanne Summers. He says, I think the home viewers are going to get the wrong idea. What do you mean, Jack? Wink, wink. Interior wink. What do you mean, Jack? Wink, wink. Now it's Suzanne Summers going, wink, wink. Well, I just think they're going to think like, well, I guess Jack Tripper really has it made. I'm beginning to think Jack Tripper doesn't have it made. So now let's say it's a private, it's, a, it's an individual conversation between Susan Summers and, and now it's John Ritter. I don't know that Jack Tripper doesn't have it made. What do you think, Suzanne? Good question. Good question, John. I would say, uh, no, I don't think he has it made. Are the writers trying to impart that he does? John Ritter would be like, That's, that was my point, exactly, yeah. That somehow crashing and burning every first or second date looks pretty good when you're having intermittent sexual uh, interactions to include heavy petting and kissing. We don't know how far it ever got. Or, it got, well, it got that far. Well, when there weren't interruptions. But it, here we go. But it's a smearingness, no? But let, let's go with this. So Susan Summers is saying, ah, I don't, I don't know. What do you say? What do you say? John Ritter says, I'm saying, are the at-home audience members going to think like, wow, this guy's got it made. He's got, I mean, he's got, he's, he's like, he's a catch. Every woman wants him. Every woman, every woman, every woman, everybody wants him. And John Ritter brings up. But let's say Suzanne Summers has a completely different personality. I would, I would think so. She says, "I, I does it no?" But seriously, she, she may no. But seriously, that's a good point. That's a good point. And John Ritter says, "Yes." What are the deeper subversivenesses that are happening? And why is Jack Tripper not aware of them? Why does Jack Tripper? I gotta go. Why does Jack Tripper not see the downsides in this quote makeshifty end quote? Quote setup and quote and quote actual end quote makeshifty quote setup and quote. Suzanne Summers like that's food for thought, and I'm not referring to your episode next week about the sh the new chef position. But that's food for thought, John. That's food for thought. Suzanne Summers, Suzanne Summers says not in this voice because she's not talking to me, but she says that's food for thought, John. And I'm not, and I am not referring to your episode next week. We are going to have a new, a new position as a chef, which is going to. John looks and says, "Crash and burn." I was going to say you're going to make a, a huge success out of it. Just kidding. But no, they both. But they both look at it. Like, yeah, exactly. He's not going to make a huge success of it, is he? Jack Tripper trips up a lot. Like that. And it's not only in his non-professional dating. Quote life and quote. Oh, here's the other source. Are we to think it's because Jack Tripper needs to come out of the closet? As an actual, no, quote actual, end quote, homosexual. Adult male. That. I actually added a layer that maybe John Ritter could have used some spiritual, soulful awareness lessons about. Because let's face it, there are individuals that have mannerisms that either indicate something or they don't. Oh, the woman's room likes that. Or does it quote love and quote quote? In italics and quotation marks, does it love? Subversiveness is in the quote forms of ambiguities. Ambiguous, this is of smearing, this is of smearing, this is of smearing. This is. So that it's not so much that Jack Chipper might be gay. There's a deeper subversiveness. Is, is John Ritter actually better off dead? I mean, gay. No, Stanley Roper thought he might be better off dead than show up in a bedroom when Jack Chipper was naked or asleep. Were they be found together? Found together. Was there a picture taken? No. Was there a photograph? I don't need your Norman Fell BS wax. 
Was there a photograph? I don't need your Norman Fell BS wax. Listen, I'm gonna end this video. Even though I'd like to keep going, I gotta, I gotta get a couple things in the store, but. It's unbelievable to me. And I said, there's individuals that we, anybody who's like homoerotically aware, like let's say you are absolutely, you might think that there's some potential for some wiggle room with bisexualism, maybe slightly occasionally, but let's face it, you're basically homosexual. You're very homoerotic. But if you're like me, you've heard about other guys that are with women, they're like, what? I was so sure that guy was gay and would know, and he knew it. Remember the episode of Real World? Let's end with this. The episode of Real World, someone says, I think he's gay, and, and, and he knows it. But how often do individuals appear to be gay at every level, homosexual, homoerotically homoerotic? And, 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 they have no clue. They are non awarely non-aware of it. In fact, they appear to be entirely smeared. I mean, obfuscatedly smeared. I mean, entirely obliviously oblivious. I'm knowing this. They are entirely obliviously oblivious to their homoerotic tendencies. I'm going to end with this. Entirely oblivious. Not by choice. Not saying that Senior Ritter would have wanted it. No, of course not. Have a heart attack and die? No. None of us wanted this. I'm gonna end with this. I'm gonna end with this. None of us wanted this. It's very depressing. I didn't want to end like this, but let's end with this. This is not anyone's idea of Magic Kingdom adventures. There are individuals that cannot afford to, to feed, house, and even have adequate hygiene products at times, you know. It's very depressing. Let's, let's go back to what I started with. Even though it seems a bit irrelevant at the moment, but I started with this. It's very depressing. I just want to say what I started with because that's what I usually do. But let's not. Let's change it up. Well, I started with the the, um, the Asian restaurant guy that was kind of cute, but I thought, no, there's some, there is something wormily wormed about absolutely every quote that you're going at this moment. Through no fault of their own, we should call it like a new song. Through no fault of their own. Should be a song title, no? Through no fault of their own. The micro worms are smeared through no fault of their own. Let's end with this. It's all Hollywood pictures have taught us in the last hundred years, really. It's, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's not their, it's not their fault. It's not your fault, it's not my fault, it's not his fault, it's not her fault, it's not their fault. It's not anyone's fault, it's its fault. Oh, remember this. It's the worm and swarm's fault. By every non-comparison, everyone else is entirely lacking in account accountability -ness at this moment for everything that's, quote, going, and quote, quote, on, and quote, in this planet. Except that we need to be deeply, deeply, soulfully, spiritually, awarely aware. That is each of our responsibilities. Oh, yeah, I'm doing this. Blaine has no chase.